I talked about what happened yesterday in City Council. We have someone who's going to talk about what happened this afternoon <laughs> in that very <laughs> same building. Uh, a good friend of mine, and uh, I heard him on the radio today. You might have too. I think it was probably carried on a number of, of channels and stations. I heard it on KERA. It was coverage of the, uh, the decision to review the uh, the no decision to fracking, this idea of just say no. To revisit, to revisit to it. Well, thanks to Gary's effort, the entire crowd said, shame, shame, shame. So here's the master of shame, Gary Stewart. Gosh, what, how, how can I respond to that? Uh, it was certainly not just me. Um, again, I'm Gary Stewart, and just a little bit about myself. I'm the chair of the board of Downwinders at Risk. We're a 20 plus year old uh, cleaner advocacy organization for the Dallas Fort Worth area and North Texas region. I'm also um, the environmental liaison for Occupy Dallas. Yay, Occupy. And Dallas move on. And um, it's hard for me to say no to causes. Uh, I guess I'm a, a promiscuous activist wise. Uh, but I have, I have had the honor, and I hope all of you do, to participate with the um, Tar Sands Blockade. And even had the chance of getting an honor of being arrested. A little bit more about the honor of getting arrested later. Um, we're at war. A war is being declared on you if you do not, well, multiple wars are being declared on us. We know that. But uh, what happened down at City Hall today um, just makes it even more clear. How many of you are familiar with the whole fracking? issue as with regard to the city of Dallas. Okay, uh, under the last mayorship record, uh, also backed by the Dallas Citizen Council, which uh, I think as activists, we need to start focusing on that tumor that is shooting out the metastases throughout this whole city in multiple ways. More about that later. <laughs> but keep that in your mind that, okay, this is part of my to-do list this year. Um, behind closed doors, or not very open doors, and certainly not with the engagement of the public, the city of Dallas took $31 million, I believe, from a gas company or some gas companies to allow them to be able to do fracking within the city limits of Dallas. Now, many of you hopefully are aware of what happened to our sister city, Fort Worth. The rape that has happened through Chesapeake and maybe some other companies. We have heard of <clears throat> properties being demolished because of waking up next morning and there is a frack well 200 feet from your house, whether you want it or not. <clears throat> if some gas driller comes to you and wants you to sign saying, uh, let me drill, <clears throat> and you say no, even if you have the mineral rights, they can still set up a well next to you and suck you dry. They can even do what they call exception. And with Chesapeake, they applied for 1,628 exceptions for the state of Texas last year. When somebody says, no, I don't want fracking, they went to the state and got an exception. And only five were turned down. So much for <clears throat> our civil rights. The right of property, the right of safety, the right of being physically safe, not just ourselves, but our families. There are neighborhoods that have been devastated by the fracking. There are places where people have their own water wells. They can turn on their tap water, light a match, and fire will come out of their faucets. That has been documented in around the Fort Worth area. Guess what, folks? It's coming, unless we do something. I know property owners, one in particular, his property was worth $70,000. They put a well on his property, a gas well. Uh, the last I heard, it was only worth $30,000. 
plummeting. And they couldn't live there anymore because the fumes were so bad. And they weren't just so bad in that it smelled bad or it didn't look pretty. These things have highly carcinogenic gases, which our state agencies that are supposed to protect us <coughs> excuse me, I was yelling earlier today. <laughs> uh, not without cause. Um, you know, it's just, it's outrageous. Outrageous that this is happening. People, our agencies that are supposed to protect us, like the Texas, uh, Texas Commission on Environmental Quality, not. And as someone mentioned, uh, my co-conspirator over there, Tammy, the Texas Railroad Commission, which has nothing to do with railroads. It's utterly, completely on gas, oil, not regulation. Don't believe that. Representation. Yes, exactly. It is a, let's just put it this way, there are better, more moral whorehouses on Harry Hyde than that whorehouse that has no sense of morality or decency or shame at all. They take money as fast as they can from the oil and gas industry, and they just rubber stamp whatever they want. They're not there for you. They're not there for us. Our state government is not for us. Now let's talk about our city government. <clears throat> so, when it became known several years ago that this was going to happen to us, when it came out that City Hall took $31 million dollars to allow fracking within city limits of Dallas, citizens became concerned. Because we were hearing stories about what has happened, what was happening over there. And luckily, that's about maybe close to eight years ago when I started becoming involved locally as an activist, that a, um, I got in on that and found out what was going on and the threat that this posed. Not even just, um, from being exposed to carcinogenic gases, property values being destroyed, water supplies being destroyed. But the fact that the Texas um, Fort Worth Metroplex has failed consistently for about maybe 20 years to meet EPA clean air standards. And guess what? Fracking, just in Tarrant County alone, has, is now as much, provides as much pollution as cars do. And they're not even finished drilling as much as they want to. Can you imagine what will happen if Dallas starts doing it? Well, anyway, citizens uh, like you, like us, said we want some um, say in this. We're concerned about what happened. We've been hearing horror stories. We want you, city of Dallas, to protect us. We want there to be developed better, strong regulations. And we didn't come out saying no fracking because that's a non-starter in oil Texas. But we said we want safe regulations. We want science-based regulations. And some of you probably remember the one-year-old, uh, or it lasted for a year, the um, tar, uh, <coughs> excuse me, the gas drilling fracking task force that the city set up. And there were some good people on that. Uh, commission and task force, but then there were more oil people or gas people on that task force. And so, for a year period of time, getting public input, scientific input, towards the end it sounded like something decent, maybe not perfect, but something decent was going to come out. And don't you know, just before it was supposed to be presented to City Hall, at the last minute, a cobble of them got together and watered down severely the recommendations to City Hall. That happened last year in May. And so, now we're trying to pressure the City Hall to adapt strong regulations. And they're just kind of sitting, waiting. And then we found out that they wanted the CPC, the City Planning or City Plan Commission, to approve three gas Fracking sites that are in parkland, city parkland, not developed parkland, but city parkland, which under today's city ordinances is against the law. 
So here's the city council, cowards. That's nice. I can say other things. But they lobbed this off to the CPC saying, well, grant the permit to these. Um, they're in parkland, but don't worry about that. <clears throat> so they wanted them to do their dirty work. Well, guess when they had a hearing on this? December the 20th. Five days before Christmas. I'm sure that was an oversight. So anyway, we got a nice bunch of people there. We waited three hours. Three hours they made us wait. And we lost some of our supporters, but we gave them one hour's worth of testimony. One hour's worth of testimony why fracking close to a prep school, a soccer field, and some other kind of facility, I think it's a golf course. But places that people use, especially children, is insane, immoral. And that what was being done was bad government. It was not the place of the CBC to make policy. It's back to the responsibility of City Hall. And I said my piece, and finally I couldn't stand it anymore. But later on, found out that they did not, not with prejudice, because with prejudice that means it would have killed the three um, permits that were being sought. But they denied uh, without prejudice and sent it back to the city hall for the city, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for city council to decide on it. It would have taken 12 votes to overturn. It. Well, guess what we found out late last last week. Well, the CPC was going to reevaluate this decision. They were going to vote to see if they could relook at the issue, even though they had already made their decision. And you know, I know I'm in the church, but forgive me. You know damn well, you know damn well that arms were being twisted. Those uh, those people on the CPC who uh, they're, uh, the people that they represent, they're the council person. Some of them, their council person did not like the vote that they took. And I'm sure they took some of them to the woodshed. So there was a lot of, you know, and the legal department too is in on it. Because your city council, who are supposed to be there for you, for us, they're afraid of being sued by the gas company or gas companies. Not taking responsibility for a bad decision, an immoral decision, an undemocratic decision that the city made. And they want your children to pay the price of having cancer, of dying, of your property going down the sink. That's the kind of leadership we have in City Hall. And then we found out Monday of this week that the gas company, um, Trinity East Energy, forgot to say something about when they made their presentation uh, last uh, December the 20th. It turns out that at least at one of the sites, it's not just going to be a gas fracking site, it's going to be a mini uh, refinery processing compression stations near a prep school? And these things emit benzene like crazy. There have been films of an infrared camera showing invisible fumes coming out. Those aren't happy gases, I can tell you. They're killers. They're, they're killers. And they <clears throat> somehow forgot to mention but we were told that citizens were not going to be allowed to speak at this hearing, at the CPA, uh, at the CPC hearing today. So we organizers set up a citizens hearing right before, where people who have dealt with fracking or who were in the struggle against fracking, not to say no fracking, we want safe fracking, we want responsible fracking. So it's not no fracking, we want responsible, scientifically-based safe fracking. 
which really the gas companies don't want because they won't make their money. They don't want strong regulations. So we went in there, and unfortunately I have to tell you that the CPC, even though three members were absent two due to illness, they had written a letter and it was also co-signed by their council person that they represent to say, please hold off on this until we can be able to come and be present. And the chairperson, I have forgotten his name, just tossed it aside. So by a 6 to 5 vote, they are going to relook at the three applications. That's democracy that you were served today. And then they decided, because I guess they were a little afraid, by unanimous vote, that you know, they were going to flop this off, lob this off to uh, February the 7th or 17th. Too. But they would allow uh, public comment. <clears throat> How nice of them. Even though one of them said that uh, this is, in all her years of being on the CPC, this was highly unusual and didn't. It wasn't of an emergency situation where it warranted to be revisited and be revoted on. So, um, the chief organizer for Downwinders at Risk, um, some of you might know him, Jim Schoenbeck, who's not a shrinking violet by any means, stood up and said, how many of you want this? How many of you want these permits? And the place was almost packed, and we stood up and said, no, we don't want it. And then, of course, given my fundamentalistic background, I'm used to shame, and so I said, shame, 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 and we all had little signs that said, shame, shame. And if you didn't see it on TV, it should be, there were reporters there. <laughs> and I've heard that the, uh, it's, uh, it's been getting some coverage. Uh, I've just been too busy trying to work on the organizing of this. And um, they walked out. We shut them down for about 20 or 30 minutes. <laughs> that is what citizens can do. Beforehand, I was allowed to speak. Because um, I knew I wouldn't get a chance to speak in there except as screaming. And I made a point looking at folks and said, You are the government. You are the government. You are the government. They're just hired help. They are hired help. We are the government. And how is it possible that our human right, our civil rights, to have clean air, clean water, clean land, health for ourselves and our children and our neighborhood, and a future that our children can live in, in a planet that is not reduced to cinder because of unbridled corruption, consumption, capitalism going haywire, and the rape of the natural world? and people along with it. All of our struggles are together. They're not separate. <clears throat> I had the honor and privilege of being a, uh, a monk under a Vietnamese Zen master, uh, Thich Nhat Hanh. And he talked about everything being interconnected. That we're not separate. And if any one of us goes down, we all go down. So I hope that we can join our forces together. Now what can you do with this issue? Um, look on the website for Dallas Residents at Risk. That's the chief coalition that's working on this issue with Blackie. Um, go to uh, Dallas, uh, no, I mean Downwinders at Risk. There's things that you can do. Another thing is that during the Texas legislative session, God help us, that uh, <laughs> there's two agencies who are up for sunset review. Guess who? The Texas Railroad Commission and the PUC. 
the Public Utilities Commission. Both of them rotten to the core. <laughs> Screwing you and cheating your children of a livable, viable, democratic, humane future. And they know what they do, and they do not care. They know what they do. They have lied to the public, knowingly lied to the public. That's what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with nice people. We're dealing with sociopaths. Truly. Truly. So it's, it's time to get to work. <clears throat> it's time to go beyond just talk. We need all of these issues need people to show up at the hearings. Raise holy hell. <laughs> holy hell. Not being bitchy or being snide, but from the anger from injustice being done and people suffering. And people are suffering from this. And this world is suffering. But we you have the power. You have the power that made those people run away today. And if enough of us go to the next hearing or to the next thing uh, concerning environmental pollution in our poor neighborhoods, and brother, thank you for raising that issue. I thank you so much. Uh, environmental racism, environmental injustice, but it also includes uh, the injustice towards women to laborers, on and on and on. So I hope that this is the beginning where we can be in dialogue with each other to find out how best we can support each other and what we're doing. Because it can't be one little camp doing it. It's, it's we've gone beyond that. <clears throat> Our enemy is well funded, but they don't have as many people as we do. We, there's more of us than them. There's more of us than them. So I hope that we can continue this dialogue of supporting each other when best we can. And uh, thank you. Uh, the only other thing I would have to say, again, is Martin Luther King said, injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere.